Let's start. I mean, I, I haven't spoken to you for weeks, so it's great to get a different perspective. Um, I, I, in the name of the Lord, it, being as calm as possible, could you possibly have foreseen the last 100 days? I mean, there it was, July the 5th, this rasping majority, 172 seats, everything in place, the debacle that was the Tory party. It's been an absolute mm show, hasn't it? Yeah, um, I, think, I think we could have foreseen problems. I think we could have definitely foreseen, I mean, we're going to, you know, you mentioned migration, we could have foreseen that. Um, we mentioned the economy. Uh, there were lots of things that were really, really tricky in the old intro um, in July that could, could have, you know, would, any, any government would have struggled with. What we wouldn't have foreseen is all these freebies, endless unforced errors, terrible calm strategy, um, and of course this infighting that has dominated so many headlines between Sue Gray, uh, the, Keir Starmer's chief of staff, and what are commonly referred to as the boys. So <laughs> the various other advisors, typically male, that she took issue with. Um, and obviously what we saw yesterday was she appears to have lost that power struggle. She has become the story. And Morgan McSweeney, who is her key rival, he is now in the top job instead. He looks about 11, Morgan McSweeney. And there was a power struggle. Is it about, I mean, I, I don't know. Is it, is it about being a man or a woman? Or do we go back to what we said at the beginning of the show and you alluded to there, which is if the chief of staff becomes bigger than the story, and actually we look back, Alistair Campbell became bigger, Dominic Cummins definitely became bigger than the story, Sue Gray the same. I mean, I think the minute we saw that she was earning more than the Prime Minister and she was phoning up cabinet ministers saying, say this, say that, you've got a job, you haven't got a job. How is that a chief of staff's job? Why isn't the PM doing that? Too much power? Well, she, she was acting like a very powerful chief of staff, which for a while it looked like she was. I mean, don't forget, Keir Starmer expended a lot of political capital in bringing her over. I mean, it was a hugely controversial appointment in the first place. And the whole point of Sue Gray was meant to be that she would know exactly how to... Uh, run the civil service. She would know exactly how to get things done. And what we actually saw, which is what I really think has happened, is she didn't seem to be that good at the things that she was touted as being very good at. I mean, there were quite a lot of bottlenecks that multiple sources said came as a result of her blocking things, um, her playing politics, her, her pushing her favourites over others. And, and the actual machinery of government didn't seem to be working as well as promised. So... All of that combined with a disastrous few weeks of just number 10 completely unable to get a handle of this freebie story um, has, has meant, you know, she's, she's gone. I mean, I wouldn't feel too sorry for her. She's almost certainly going to end up in the House of Lords. But it's still pretty disastrous for, you know, within the first 100 days <coughs> to lose such a key member of staff. When you said you could see the obvious problems that we could all see, like immigration and, and the economy... I'm talking about the own goals. I mean, what have we got today? Proud Socialist Angela Rayner bought a boyfriend a suit from the Royal Tailors. 68 grand for a photographer, Keir Starmer, admitting these freebies and then having to apologise and give them back. I just don't think, and I'm not in any way... Rachel Reeves today back, backing down on the pension tax rate. <laughs> it's almost like... We talked about this before. It's almost like it was easy from the cheap seats, wasn't it? Yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that. There's a black hole, the Tories are crap. It's cronyism, it's jobs for the boys. I mean, it's not for me to say it's worse, but it's no better. And they must be slightly worried by that, that um, poll today. Have you seen it? That said that 60% of Britons believe that the Labour Party is engulfed, the Labour government is engulfed in sleaze, Anna. Well, it, it was always going to be a tricky strategy for a politician to take such a hard line on sleeves like Keir Starmer did. I mean, basically pointing, you know, painting himself as whiter than white and um, saying he's going to change politics. Yeah. You know, it is exactly what a lot of people wanted to hear and still want to hear. I think realistically, those of us who followed politics know that's that pretty much on every side there are going to be scandals. Um, what is extraordinary is that some of these issues weren't foreseen and the way that the story has been handled as well. So with the freebies, for example... The comms have been Star rubbish, haven't they? The comms have been and, terrible. And, and I think it's also unfair to just blame the comms and just blame the advisors. There's a certain point that this comes from the top. <laughs> I mean, Keir Starmer is the Prime Minister, and the fact that he has gone out repeatedly and said things like, well, what do you want me to do, give up my Arsenal tickets? Well, yeah. well yes, yes, just, just don't go to Arsenal for a few years when you're Prime Minister. Um, you're meant to be solving the, the country's issues. 
So I think people have really struggled to look at that messaging and the way it's been handled. I look at last week where effectively the story had slightly died down and then number 10 put out a statement saying he's going to pay, what was it, £6,000 back? Which says he's made a... Pro and I, a I, and I said that, Dave, so that says that the 6000 he took since he became Prime Minister, he's admitted, was wrong. What about the 107 and a half, well, 107500 quid well, he took whilst leader think, of the opposition? Well, have, have, some, have some empathy with our Prime Minister. The, no. The defence on that is it's got to be quite a large sum to repay, 106000 Oh, for God's I, I, I honestly can't believe, and I said it, I've said it, and I'm interested in you, I mean, I, I, I'm really interested in your far more balanced approach than me. I can't believe the optics, I can't believe how stupid they've been, the winter pension thing was always going to be. I've called that their poll tax. I'm going to say something, and you're going to give me that very serious political face. I genuinely believe, for lots of reasons that we can't talk about, I think he'll be gone. I genuinely think... I, somebody phoned me up the other day and everybody went, that's a bit outrageous. The socialists are in power. I'm sure the left, which is far stronger than many of us still believe in the Labour movement, would like nothing more than Starmer to be gone out the door because he's never been popular with them and neither has Rachel Reeves. I can't see... Can you see Starmer surviving? I can't. I, th I think you, what you have to remember is we've all got slightly addicted to the conservative rule book of being able to change leader um, yeah. every few months in the last couple of years. Good point. Uh, one really important thing that Keir Starmer did when he became leader of the Labour Party was he did a lot of behind the scenes work in, t in changing the rules, um, in shoring up his base within the party, in kicking out the left, but but in actually changing the rules of the party itself and their processes, which is the stuff that is never going to make headlines, but was really, really important in securing his power. Um, so I don't think it will be just as easy, but but I think the popularity thing is, is key and losing that subtle coalition of voters that were assembled for this huge majority, mm. um, I think if you continue down this road, then, then you're going to lose them too. I, I mean, don't forget... This reset yesterday, um, Sue Gray stepping down, Morgan McSweeney getting the top job. They've also brought in some other sort of respected people. They are trying to beef up. They're trying to reset. Am um, I naive to ask you the obvious yeah. question? If you were, had been planning to be Prime Minister for that long, if you were so sure as he was that he was going to win, why the hell wouldn't a good politician make the correct choices in the first instance? Well, yet there is an. I agree with you, but there's also an argument, just to play devil's advocate, that some of these problems with Sue Gray were there from the start. Yeah. Um, she served a purpose in preparing them for government, and the people who she um, went up against, they basically held off until after the election. So they could have done all these briefings beforehand, but that didn't really start happening. And then as soon as they won the majority, they've actually gone right. It's and now we're going to do all these hot coffee things. It's unbelievable. Which Listen, I also want to ask you about a couple of other things. Obviously, today um, is the first anniversary, October the 7th, those dreadful terrorist Hamas attacks a year ago and the problems that have, have, have happened um, again uh, in the Middle East. We've all watched that with horror uh, and, and sadness and, and, and we all have our own strong views on that. Uh, Starmer jumped up today in House of Commons and said, a ceasefire, a ceasefire. I'm naive, of course. I've been slagged off online repeatedly. I think for a ceasefire to work, you need two sides who want a ceasefire. I'm not sure that's actually true but I made the point just then that that Israel as a democratically elected government sees itself being attacked by terrorist cells funded by Iran from all sides and I think Netanyahu has decided that now is the time but in terms of a year down the line it's 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 extraordinarily appalling what's happened in 12 months isn't it absolutely I, I mean I think today you know just 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 to say I think today is a day to remember the victims their mm. families there's a lot of um, very moving pieces um, that have come out obviously today in the last few days of, of just that horror and, and also remembering, remembering the detail, um, reliving it uh, as uncomfortable as it is because that, that, that is where, you know, th this is a day of history, it's the first anniversary. No, I agree, but, but I guess as somebody who's been quite vocal about the numbers of um, Jewish friends of mine who have 
being treated so appallingly, I do think the rise of anti-Semitism in this country, and I'm talking about this country, not across the world, is, is, is something that we really, really need to get a grip of. We've touched upon migration. A thousand, a thousand migrants uh, crossing the Channel in one day on Saturday, a record day. So the new Border Force boss, who took 12 weeks to find, didn't want the job, he was second, and went against Starmer on the first day by saying something against Starmer. Uh, and um, I'm going to tackle the gangs. That doesn't seem to be working, because apparently um, blunders this week mean that half of people smuggling gangs may escape justice. It's not going very well for Starmer on that either, is it, to be honest, Anna? Well, it, it, it's sort of, you know, you, you hate to say I told you so, but that, yeah. that is what a lot of people are saying, essentially. Um, they, Keir Starmer went into the election saying he's going to smash the gangs, smash the gangs. It's obviously only, you know, it, it's only the first few months, um, and, and there have been some successes, there have been some measures that seem to be, you know, positive, but I think yesterday, the, all of these totals, they just show how huge the problem is, how, I mean, you also get these farcical stories like this court case in France where they actually managed to smash a gang and yet can't bring any of them to justice. Um, so I, I'm, I, I don't know what you think. I think we're too soft and I think we, we need to look at the environment with which we offer people who come here. Can I ask you before you go, it's amazing to have you on. This really jumped out at me today, the Reform Party. Nigel Farage, Richard Tice uh, logged a question or wrote a letter to Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary. Basically, you'll know that story about July's disturbance at Manchester Airport, the, the footage that went viral, the police officer kicking the head of, of one of two suspects. When more information was gathered, turns out that the nose of a female colleague had been broken, Blah, blah, blah. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Let's just lay it out. The policeman's been suspended and is under threat and that he could lose his job. I, I believe they're Asian men. We're just saying that because it's a fact. The Crown Prosecution Service has still not even acted. This is, um, what, four months. Uh, reform have today said that it plans a private prosecution against those men being suspected of being involved at Manchester Airport if they're not charged by the CPS because they think this is an absolute another example of two-tier policing under Keir Starmer. What are your thoughts, Anna? Honestly, my thoughts are, and that is a story I think the Mail on Sunday actually led on. Um, I think while a lot of your listeners will be rightly shocked by the story and shocked by the CPS's mishandling of it, I'm I'm very nervous about the idea of politicians bringing about private prosecutions just because they don't agree with the law. I would much rather reform provided uh, proper suggestions about how to improve the CPS and improve what's actually going on and improve two-tier policing. I don't think private prosecutions are the way here by politicians. But you agree there is two-tier policing and we're not going to speculate on the reasons for that. But as I've said throughout about like the, the, the riots, I thought it was great that we were able to, to get our police onto the streets and deal with those. But as somebody said to me, if you write, no, if you write, if you, if you, great, well done, Jess. If you, you know, go out and protest now, you can be called a far right thug. Actually, people should be able to protest, and that was politicised. Do you think that two tier policing is alive and well in this country? I mean, I, I certainly, I don't, you know, I don't think it's me to think it. Um, I know lots of people think it and have valid, very um, legitimate reasons for doing so. I I think it's the job of politicians to address it um, and, and also not to inflame concerns about it, frankly, as well.